and I specialize in Eastern European genealogy. Some general trends in Eastern European DNA. Right now, we're kind of starting to hit the point where more people are taking tests. Before, when I took a DNA test about four years ago, there weren't many people who were in a lot of these databases from Eastern Europe. So now, after about 10 years of people taking DNA tests, we're starting to see people both in Eastern Europe and in America take more DNA tests. Um, usually this is amongst young people, particularly um, people who are in college, which means that the accuracy of our results are getting significantly better and more DNA communities are starting to be formed in, in DNA test companies like MyHeritage and Ancestry. Endogamy is also something that's starting to be accounted for within these genealogy website um, tests, which is really exciting for someone who has a lot of endogamy in their family tree and some pedigree collapse. So why use DNA? DNA is a great place to start your research, especially if you haven't done any research before. You can get a basic idea of where your family is from. It can help you break your brick walls that are bugging you. So for a lot of us Eastern European folk, we have ancestors who just immigrated here in the 1900s and we can't really figure out where they're from exactly. And another really cool bonus of DNA testing is that it can prove your tree correct, or it can prove what you th who you thought your ancestors were completely wrong, which again, that kind of goes to the unknown parentage and ancestry. So some important DNA terms, I wasn't sure how many people would know a lot of terms when it comes to DNA testing. So a centimorgan is a basic unit of gen genealogy that, um, of genetics that describes how closely you are to someone. So you can share between about 3,800 centimorgans or usually as low as 20 centimorgans, depending on the DNA test company. And most genealogists start stop looking at their DNA matches after 20 or even 30 centimorgans. A chromosome is you have 23 pairs of them. Um, two, one of them is going to be your sex chromosome, so that's your X and your Y chromosome. And the other, thir um, which you get your X and your Y um, from your father and your mother. If you're a male, then you got your Y from your dad and your X from your mom. And if you're a female, then you got X's from both of your parents. And then your other chromosomes are more autosomal. So you're going to have, you're going to get um, 22 chromosomes from um, one of each 22, 20, yeah, Eat one of each 22 chromosomes from your parents, and they're going to get them from their parents as well. So that's where a lot of your DNA matches are going to be coming from those 22 main chromosomes. And then a haplogroup is a population that shares a common ancestor, either through the paternal or the maternal group. So as you see on my screen, those are my haplogroups. And then DNA clusters are a group of DNA matches that share DNA match with D DNA with each other. And I'll show you what a DNA cluster looks like in a visual form a little bit later. So really important concepts in Eastern European genealogy are endogamy and pedigree collapse. So endogamy is the practice of marrying within the same community generation after generation. And you see this a lot within Eastern European groups, especially with Ashkenazi Jews, but you'll also see this amongst pretty much every community in Eastern Europe. And then 
another thing you'll see is pedigree collapse, which you're going to see this mostly in small communities where your ancestors probably didn't move much. And this means that you have repeating ancestors, which means that you have less ancestors that are going to be represented in total. And this is a, the visual here is a tree of an Elias cousin of mine who has very few ancestors, as you can see. She descends from one of my earliest ancestors, Jan Elias, about eight or nine times. And she's not that distantly related to me. So there are three different types of DNA tests. There are autosomal tests, which are more general. They're testing 22 of your centimorgans, and they help you find cousins all around your family tree. So as you see on the chart below, you're going to have cousins that are related to different ancestors all across that pedigree chart. A Y DNA test, only males can take it, and it tests the Y, the y chromosome. And you're only going to be able to find people that are related on the male line. So that's on my chart, that's the green side. And these DNA tests are really good for proving your surname and for just proving male connections in your family tree. Mitochondrial DNA tests test the female line, and both men and women can take this DNA test, and that's going to test your female line. So what companies have which DNA tests? Autosomal DNA tests are by far the most common of the DNA tests, and there are four major companies. There is MyHeritage, Ancestry, 23andMe, and Family Tree DNA. And then for Y tests and mitochondrial DNA tests, only Family Tree does them. There are a few other companies that do different types of tests, but these are the main um, companies that I'm focusing on because these are where most Eastern European people are DNA testing currently. So to talk, I'm mostly going to be using my grandfather's DNA test as an example, except for when it comes to 23andMe, I'll be using mine because I haven't tested him because, as you'll see later, DNA tests are really expensive. And it's not really realistic for me to get all of my family tested currently. So my grandfather is half Czech, and his ancestors immigrated to the Banat, which is a region in Romania. As you see, the little blue circle thing um, in Romania, that is the Banat, and it's a region that my ancestors moved about 200 years ago to, and they've been there ever since. So there's a lot of endogamy that happens within this population of people because no one's really left the community and no one's really joined the community ever since the immigration. And there were only about 500 people that immigrated in total, most of which I'm completely related to. My grandfather is also half, uh, half Polish with some distant Swavian ancestry, which the Swavians live in northern Poland, and they're a group of people that mostly got Germanized during World War II. And then my grandfather also has some possible Jewish ancestry. As you'll see, there's a DNA cluster that my grandfather has that is completely Jewish, and they, on their DNA tests, show up as completely completely having Ashkenazi Jewish heritage. So that's another really interesting thing you can find as well, is that you'll find that with these DNA clusters, you'll see that different ethnic groups are going to be represented, and they can be a really good clue on where to look or what possible ancestors you need to be looking for that you hadn't maybe thought about before. So ancestry is by far the biggest DNA tester for 
Eastern European people, and it costs about $99 to get tested with them, and which is a decent price for a DNA test right now. And then they have DNA match matching, which is really nice, and they do it by groups. So you can create your own groups like I have. I have a maternal group um, for one for my paternal grandfather, one for my paternal grandmother, and then one for my, my maternal grandfather and one for my maternal grandmother. And then I have additional groups that I use for help to help me sort my different DNA matches. So like if they have a tree and I haven't proven how I'm related to them, if they're illegitimate, I find this a lot where I have DNA matches that their tree is completely English, but they'll be 25% Eastern European on a DNA test. And I don't know where that mistake for them is necessarily. So I just have to put that these people are through an illegitimate line and I don't know where they exactly are related to me. And then another thing that because often Eastern European genealogists, we have to look at such small centimorgans. Usually most of my matches are in the 20 to 30 centimorgan range. There are going to be a lot of false positive matches. And one of the reasons why I know I have so many false positive matches is because I have both of my parents who have taken DNA tests. And since there's DNA matches that don't match either of my parents, they have to be false positive. So on so the next um is this is what a ancestry test um DNA estimate is going to look like. So for my grandfather, he is again, I previously said he's half Czech, half Polish. So he should be popping up as 100% Eastern European in theory. In reality, you're going to see that DNA testing first is still not very accurate for us, but also that there's a lot of migration that happened, particularly amongst Polish people in Germany, you're going to see a lot of people who are from the border region of Poland and Germany are going to have both Eastern European and Germanic. But then you also will get really interesting, weird um, DNA estimates with 3% English or 2% Balkans, which probably isn't very accurate. And another thing that you see on this image is DNA communities. So for my grandfather, he has Czech ancestry. So his he has a Czech circle, dotted circle, and then he's also Polish. So he's got a really big Polish circle, but also from the specific region that he has ancestry from, you see that he's got a smaller circle that shows pretty accurately where he's from, which is really useful if you're not really sure where your family's from. You can take a DNA test like this and see that, oh, I have ancestors from northern Poland. So you can start looking at resources there and figuring out a research plan. And so something that Ancestry has recently come out with is a chromosome browser, which shows you what if you go back to the image before, where um, the DNA estimates, where they're coming from on which chromosome and which parent even you get that answer, um, that get that part of your DNA from. So like my maternal, my grandfather's maternal side is the Polish side. And I initially thought that my it, all of the German was going to be from the Czechs, because if you know Czech history, a lot of Czechs are ethnic Germans as well as also being Czech. But if you look at my grandfather's DNA, his German ancestry mostly comes from his mother's side, although there is some German that comes from his father's side. And these tools are really good about 
good for proving theories that you have about your ethnic background, and they can also be used with other tools. So you can use them with the DNA painter, and I'll explain a little bit later what a DNA painter is. The last really major tool that Ancestry has is through lines, and through lines is a tool that with your DNA, it goes through your DNA and it looks at your DNA matches trees and it auto builds these trees. For people who have Eastern European genial, Eastern European DNA, these trees tend to be pretty accurate, but don't always take them as gospel because they can be inaccurate, especially if the tree, if your matches tree is wrong or if you have an air in your tree. So the next DNA company is MyHeritage. And MyHeritage is a great company if you have close ancestors, if you have close immigrant ancestors, because most European people are testing with MyHeritage because MyHeritage has been doing massive campaigns to get people in Poland and the Czech Republic and other regions of Europe to take DNA tests for free. So you're going to see a lot more DNA matches from Eastern Europe. And another interesting bonus with MyHeritage is that you have the specific country that they're from. So like I see that I have an ancestor from or a DNA match from the Czech Republic, which actually this DNA match is originally from Romania and later immigrated back to the Czech Republic. And then this is what their DNA estimate looks like. My heritage but doesn't have a good DNA estimate for Eastern European people, as you can see. My grandfather is only 37% Eastern European, and he's 19% North or West um, European, which those are probably okay estimates. Um, in that my my grandfather likely does have northern and western European ancestry, and he definitely does has eastern European ancestry. But then you get to the thirteen percent Irish, and my grandfather is definitely not Irish. And another thing with my heritage is that they've tried to do communities, but the communities aren't particularly helpful, not yet at least. I th think that in the future you're going to start to see that communities are going to start to get smaller and smaller until you have three or four villages in a genetic community. And once you, we get to that point, it's going to be really easy for us to do genetic genealogy and also do paper genealogy. So my heritage allows its users to look at it to pick DNA matches that they have and to use a chromosome browser so you can see what parts of your DNA are in common with a DNA match. So you can see that on the eighth chromosome there are with the first match that I chose, there are two segments that I share. And then with and the second match, there is a small, smaller segment. And then with my last match, I don't share any DNA. And another really cool tool that MyHeritage has is that they allow auto clustering of your DNA matches. So if I were to have a full picture of the auto cluster, what you would see is names on the side of the um of the grid and these names would be duplicated so that in the very in the very middle um their names are the are matching so at these very dark in the very dark or the very dark orange those are where the person's the exact same and then if they match the next person then it's a colored dot, and if they don't match, then it's a gray dot. 
And if it's a very if it's a dark gray dot, that means that there are matches on a different cluster than um, the major cluster. So like my grandfather, again, being half Czech and half Polish, he has Polish and then Czech cluster clusters, and those clusters obviously don't match. And then some of my grandfather has a lot of Polish clusters, so he's got these three clusters at the very bottom that match with the big orange one. And then he also has a independent cluster of just Jewish DNA matches. So the next company that I want to talk about is Family Tree DNA. And as you can already see from this picture, they don't have as many DNA matches at a high level, but there are still some good DNA matches that you're going to be able to find. And I know from this taking this picture that all three of these DNA matches, except for obviously the top one that's me, are all unique to this database. So you're still going to find some useful DNA matches. Oh, wait, that's a little odd. That was not supposed to be that way. Um, so with, wait, I'm sorry. No, this was supposed to be this way, sorry. Um, so family tree DNA was, doesn't um, allow for you to freely look at your, at, um, they're your DNA estimates unless you take a DNA test with them. And I'll talk about a little later that you can upload your DNA test, which is what I recommend you do because it's a lot cheaper and you're going to get a lot more use out of your money than if you were to buy four DNA tests. So the last DNA company that I want to talk about is my hair, or 23andMe. And 23andMe is the second largest database for genetic genealogy when it comes to Eastern Europe. And sadly, my grandfather hasn't taken a DNA test with 23andMe, so you have my results, which my results are actually pretty accurate. I'm about half Eastern European, and then I also have Irish and Scandinavian ancestry and Italian ancestry as well. In some really cool features that you have with 23andMe is that they show regions of whatever country you have ancestors from, and they'll show where they think your DNA comes from. And it's not always accurate. So like with the UK, I have apparently ancestors from London. I don't. I'm completely Cork Irish when it comes to my Irish side. But still, that's pretty useful. And with my Polish, I actually, I don't think it's particularly useful for me. Um, my grandfather might have different results because I do have ancestors from every part of Poland that they show. But again, I'm not sure how useful that is or how accurate that necessarily is. And then another tool that 23andMe has is that they have this beautiful graph that shows you how long ago you may have an ancestor that was pure Eastern European. So for me, I one of my parents should be pure Eastern European, which they're not. They're both of my parents are half, but still that's close enough. And then I should, between my grandparents and my second great grandparents, have a pure Irish ancestor, and so on. So these graphs are really useful for helping prove what your tree possibly looks like, although it might not always be accurate. So 23andMe also has a chromosome browser just like Ancestry, and it's a little different since they show so many different ethnic groups. You're going to see that it's a little bit more complicated but it's still a really useful tool and you can compare Ancestry and 23andMe and see where maybe you have different results in different areas and where results are really good. So 
So which autosomal test is best? Um, for me, it's Ancestry because they have the most DNA matches, but there's a lot of other DNA tests. So I'm going to go through all of them. Um, with Ancestry, it costs $99 and you can't upload your DNA tests. But I think it's pretty worth the price if I, they have the most DNA matches. And then with 23andMe, this is my number. Um, I have 144 DNA matches. So my grandfather probably has about 90 or so DNA matches. And it costs the same amount to do an Ancestry DNA test or a 23 me DNA test as it does to take an Ancestry DNA test. And they also don't allow you to upload your DNA. But you can download your DNA from both of these websites and upload them to MyHeritage and to Family Tree DNA and GEDmatch. And I haven't talked about GEDmatch just because I only have 17 ma matches from GEDmatch and they're all from different websites because GEDmatch you can is you don't take a DNA test with GenMatch, you just upload your DNA. So with MyHeritage, there is a cost to uploading your DNA if you want to get the full um, results. Like you won't get an S DNA estimate if you don't pay um, $29. But you can take it for free and just get your DNA matches and which is just fine in my opinion. And I have 70 DNA matches on my heritage. And most of them, if not all of them, are in Eastern Europe right now. So that's really helpful for me. And then with Family Tree DNA, their DNA tests cost $79. Um, and or you can upload your DNA for free to Family Tree DNA which is what I did. I didn't take their autosomal DNA test and I only have 26 DNA matches. So it wasn't really worth it for me. And the last company um, that I didn't talk about at all because I only have three DNA matches there, so it's not helpful, is um, Living DNA, which they cost $99 to take. And Living DNA is mostly a British DNA testing website, but they've been trying to expand. So I thought it was worth m at least mentioning them, especially if you have pure um, or even are half British, because they're pretty good with British DNA from what I understand. So then getting into Y-DNA and mitochondrial DNA. So Y-DNA is, again, you can only test your male line. Um, and only males can take it. And there's different levels of Y-DNA tests. Um, the Y-11 costs $250, and then the big Y costs $450. So I recommend, if you want to get these DNA tests, wait until Christmas or Father's Day. They may have a sale, and it's going to be a lot cheaper. That's what I did. And I would only recommend getting this DNA test if... First, you're either an avid genealogist like me, or you have a lot of issues with your paternal line. Because as you'll see, I don't have any matches at all. Um, my closest match is 36 SNPs away, which is quite a lot when you're talking about Y-DNA. And they're also from the Czech Republic, which is nice. So my male check line has been in the Czech Republic for a long, long time, um, which makes me happy. But again, I wouldn't really recommend these tests because they're not super duper helpful, at least not yet. Hopefully in the future, again, we'll get more people taking DNA tests. So these DNA databases will get a lot better. And then mitochondrial DNA tests, anyone can take. Um, and it tests the mitochondrial line, or the maternal line. And these tests cost $156 or $59. And these DNA tests, you're going to find a lot more DNA matches. So I have 160 
seven matches, but I only have like 30 matches that are at a genetic distance of zero. And even with the genetic distance of zero means that our most common ancestor lived around 700 years ago or closer. So that still means that there's a long range that they, that we could have a common ancestor, which is still, it's still helpful. Um, but you're probably not going to find that many useful DNA matches using mitochondrial DNA. And as you can see from my DNA results, most of my close matches are French, which is, again, it's interesting to know that I have a lot of French people in my family tree. In fact, all of these people are Quebecers. Um, so I have a lot of DNA cousins through them. Um, and I do have some Polish cousins as well. and which is probably more helpful for me. And if you take a DNA test and find um, matches, I would probably just look at the ones that are of the right ethnic group that your family is from. So what DNA tests should you take? I would start with Ancestry and 23andMe and through those DNA companies, you're going to get a grasp of what matches exist for you and how many matches exist. And your bulk of your DNA matches are going to be in those two companies. Unless you have really close um, Eastern European immigrants, like if your parents were um, from Eastern Europe, then my heritage might be better for you than those two companies. But what I would then do after getting your two main DNA tests is uploading your DNA to MyHeritage and to Family Tree DNA, because you can do those for completely for free, and you're going to find a lot of useful DNA matches that maybe aren't in, diff in the original two databa databases that you were looking at. So for if you have specific problems, again, with your maternal or your paternal line, I would use a mitochondrial or Y-DNA test. But as I, you saw before, these tests aren't super helpful, at least not yet. And in the meanwhile, I would start testing your siblings, your cousins, or anyone who's in a generation above you. So like your parents, your grandparents, if they're still alive, or some aunts and uncles. So how do you download your DNA? So on Ancestry, which is what I did, I got all my DNA from Ancestry and uploaded it everywhere. You go to your DNA test, you then go to settings, and then you download your DNA test from there. You're going to get an email and you download that file. And then you have to extract all. Otherwise, you won't be able to upload your DNA test. And once you extract it, you can just go to the website and they're going to, sh you're going to very easily be able to upload your DNA test. So, another great tool that you can use with 23andMe and MyHeritage is chromosome, the chromosome painter, which with the chromosome painter, you can see what parts of your DNA come from where. So what I did with my grandfather's DNA is I collected all of his DNA matches that share 20 centimorgans or more, and I've started to paint all of them. Um, in fact, the, these are all of the DNA matches that exist for my grandfather currently. And all of the DNA that they share. And you can see that only 23% of my grandfather's chrom of my gen my grandfather's genotype or his complete profile is done. Um, which isn't a lot for most people who have British or early American heritage. They're able to very easily complete their profile. And what you also see is that I have a lot of areas 
where I mark that there's unknown Czech or unknown Polish heritage, and those are my super dark colors. So what I would recommend is when you get a DNA test to do something like this, figure out where you, where, what lines of DNA come from where, and then with your unknown DNA matches, put all of them into a chromosome painter like this, and then you can see where these DNA matches are sharing DNA. And that's really helpful for your brick wall breaking and using different tools to break down these brick walls. So with the DNA painter, you have the shared Sun and Morgan project, which the shared Sun and Morgan project is a basically a conglomeration of different DNA um, results that people have done and that they've given to the company or to the website. And they show you what, um, what the likelihood that your DNA match is going to have a certain relationship. So you can pretty easily with the shared Sun and Morgan project, figure out how relatives are related and if it's likely that they're related to you in a certain way. So if the paper trails right, um, you can use Sun and Morgan's or percentages with the Sun and Morgan, the shared Sun and Morgan project as well. So that's pretty helpful if you're using both my hair or if you're using both 23andMe and Ancestry, you can quickly use both. So the last thing that I wanted to show off is what I call a DNA tree, which this is a basic version that I've done of my grandfather's um, grandparents, John Elias and Anna Elias, and shown all of the people that have DNA tested. And what I did was I showed using DNA Painter, I put in all of the Sun and Morgans and how they're related to me, and it showed the likelihood of them being related to me. So Anna and Belle, they're, the likelihood that they hold the relationships that they do is only a 1% chance. So I wanted to mark that it's not very likely that they're related to me this in this way, and maybe I need to look and see if maybe they're a half cousin, or maybe we just inherit the same DNA, at which point I probably should get in contact with them anyway, because they're going to have different DNA matches. <laughs>